The title of next, next paper is uh, Cleavage Fracture Assessment of Hot Charge Steel Slab Using Experimental and Numerical Approaches. Okay. Authors are Reza Hojoti, Telemi, Antonio Antonio de Souza Braga Neto, Negar Gilani, and Ngo Kwangten. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh -huh. Please introduce yourself. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Reza Talami. I'm from the uh, Department of Material Engineering from uh, Kau Leuven from Belgium. Uh, I'll talk about uh, cleavage fracture of, uh, let's say, um, slab steels, but at high temperature. The term itself uh, is a little bit strange, having cleavage fracture at uh, uh, high temperatures. So first I will introduce the problem, then uh, I'll show how uh, we can examine these sort of problems using experimental setups, and uh, what we expect to, uh, let's say, uh, to predict these kind of uh, problems using numerical simulation and at the end uh, let's see if there is a solution uh, combining these uh, two uh, experimental and numerical approaches to, to provide uh, to, to different plants to avoid these kind of problems. So uh, I'll uh, directly start with the problem. So uh, after continuous casting there will be some steel slabs these steel slabs are uh, stored in slab yard. And then uh, something is missing here. Uh, I'll directly go to PDF version. I had it for backup. So it be. OK. Sorry, now it's better. So uh, after, after uh, uh, here in the slab yard, uh, if they use these slabs at, in the reheating furnace, then it's called cold charging. But if they use, uh, let's say, a hot uh, slab at high temperature and then they reheat it and then they put it in the, uh, let's say, a street mill, they call it hot charging. But in both cases, let's say in the slab yard, uh, uh, yard they see this kind of uh, cleavage fracture and uh, brittle fracture. Also in the, in the rolling mill, they see this kind of uh, abnormal fracture, which is really uh, annoying for them because they have to stop the line, they have to change the, uh, let's say, the, the change the, the line, and then they have to maintain uh, these uh, fractures. There are different, uh, let's say, possibilities for this kind of uh, brittle fractures, uh, and it could happen everywhere. It can be in the slab yard during transportation, uh, during this, uh, uh, let's say, rolling process. And uh, at this point, uh, they try to use uh, different sort of simulations, uh, reheating simulations here, even the, this process, or even this process, and they can transfer this the uh, heat to some stress levels, but at this point they don't know what is the critical stress and how to avoid this kind of cleavage fracture. So the, the main objective of this work was to find out a kind of uh, cleavage uh, stress uh, to, to, uh, to assess this process. Uh, to do that, first we try to run some experiments to see how would it be possible to uh, to tackle this problem experimentally. Uh, then we, we tried uh, to use drop bed tear test because the slab material, they are really thick materials and we cannot address the, the, the fracture toughness of these uh, materials using Sharpie toughness uh, testing. Uh, a typical, let's say, drop bed tear test according to standards here, you see a 2.19 uh, uh, meter height uh, drop bed tear test. Uh, there are some weight which would be uh, let's say released on this sort of uh, samples and then we can just uh, check the absorbed energy at different temperatures. Let's say for typical steel, the, the final steel here, for instance pipeline steels, uh, we have this uh, fracture surface for uh, let's say upper shelf which is ductile and we have brittle fracture at lower shelf which looks like this and in transition area we have mixed ductile and uh, brittle fracture but this is not, uh, let's say, the case for steel slabs because these are not the final products. So uh, what we want to do is to use this setup 
to address uh, to, uh, some difficulties that we have with the sleet and stops. But we need to know uh, some basics about drop bait tear test because when we see the force versus displacement curve, which the area beneath this curve gives us the amount of energy that we need to break that material, uh, we need to understand the behavior of this material. For instance, here there are some uh, different curves that we could see as a result when we are doing the test. If there is a, let's say, sharp pop in here, then we know that it's a, it's a brittle fracture. If uh, here we have a brittle fracture in the beginning and then ends up with ductile fracture, again, brittle fracture, and then we have some mix of ductile and brittle fracture, but at this part of the curve, we see that uh, after the maximum point, the uh, ductile fracture initiation is important and then uh, follows some brittle and again uh, ductile fracture. Uh, if we divide this two curve in two parts, the, the first part is the amount of energy we, uh, we need to initiate the crack and the second part is the amount of energy that the crack needs, needs to propagate. So we can say the total energy that we need uh, for, to break this material is crack initiation and crack propagation. So uh, we got the slab material. You see this is a, let's say, slab uh, which is very non-homogeneous. So we try to have two different configurations. Uh, you see configuration one and two. And the main difference between these two configurations are the fracture surfaces. So the, in the con configuration one, the fracture propagates, at least we expect to propagate through the, the thickness. And uh, this one is through the width. Uh, but what we see, interestingly, after doing the test with these slab materials, we see that at uh, room temperature, we, all, we almost have, let's say, negligible amount of energy uh, to, to break the material. And then it goes up to some uh, uh, temperature and then again goes down. Uh, if we just uh, divide the initiation and propagation, we see almost the same behavior. And uh, we see at some temperatures like this, 300... Uh, the difference between two, uh, let's say, configurations are, uh, let's say, considerable. Uh, and also, we have the same uh, behavior for uh, crack initiation and uh, crack propagation. So uh, these, uh, let's say, energy values that we see here does not help us because they cannot transfer that to some stress values when they do the, let's say, the heat uh, uh, treatment simulation or uh, let's uh, let's say the the heat, uh, heat treatment simulation or the um, uh, how can I say the when they stack up the these slabs uh, and they let it cool down they try to simulate that but they cannot use this uh, amount of uh, energies that we see here so uh, we tried first to use this uh, force versus displacement curves and to see what would be the difference between these two configurations we see at uh, room temperature. Uh, it's quite brittle, and then at uh, higher temperatures, there are some, let's say, deviation between these two uh, configurations, but at higher temperatures, it's uh, most likely uh, ductile. Uh, so if we, if we look at the macro uh, fracture surface, we see at uh, room temperature, it's quite brittle material, uh, and even at, uh, let's say, 100 degree C, we see some uh, brittle uh, fracture and it's a combination of brittle and ductile. I'll show some uh, micrographs later. But at high, uh, let's say, temperatures, uh, 300 and 500, we have, uh, let's say, uh, quite uh, ductile behavior. So, uh, as I said, uh, at uh, 100 degree, we see some brittle fracture, as you can see here, and it's a mix of ductile and brittle. And at high temperatures, uh, we have some shrinkage and fully ductile uh, crack propagation. Uh, for both configuration one and two, we see the same uh, shrinkage and uh, let's say uh, ductile fracture at high temperatures. Then we, we try to use the uh, numerical simulation to address these problems. Uh, to do that, we use the kind of uh, the dynamic analysis uh, from drop bait tier test. The idea was to use a simple uh, elastoplastic model to uh, model the, the, the formation of the, the, the specimen after the impact and also later on using the extended finite element model and cohesive zone element model to see the, the propagation. And these are the, let's say, the basic properties that we use for our model at different temperatures. 
I won't talk about the basic of X1, but basically we are avoiding mesh refinement and also capturing the singularity using extended finite element uh, uh, formulation. Uh, and we need uh, two parameters uh, for cohesive zoom model when, when we are combining that with extended finite element model, which is the maximum traction, uh, uh, let's say, uh, stress, and also the amount of energy that we need to uh, propagate the crack, which we use uh, the, the same drop weight to your test to calibrate uh, the model. So if uh, we plot the simulation versus the, uh, let's say, the experiments without any damage accumulation. So at this point, we are not interested to, to see the cracks. We just want to see if we have a simple uh, elastoplastic model, how does our model behave. Uh, you see that uh, it's a quite uh, a good agreement uh, between the simulation at room temperature, but at high uh, temperatures, there are some deviations. But it's, it's very difficult to capture this, uh, let's say, wave trans, uh, uh, transformation when we are uh, simulating the impact uh, simulation. If we do more uh, experimental tests, we see also some deviations. Uh, to, to calibrate these two uh, parameters that I told you about uh, for, uh, let's say, uh, the cohesive zoom model, uh, we try to uh, find out the, the crack initiation location and we stop the test here the simulation and we got this stress value which is which was the maximum principal stress value and then the the area beneath this uh, uh, curve helped us to get the, the amount of energy that we need to 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 have to fracture and we did it for both configuration configuration one and two so we had two parameters per each configuration uh, but the, the the most difficult part was the finding the right stress at notch tip because we had different situation. We had really sharp, uh, let's say, uh, it could be a sharp defect inside the slab, but it could be a kind of inclusion which uh, the stress uh, were not that much sharp. So we used two stress values, one stress at notch tip, notch tip another one we extracted uh, using a kind of critical distance approach. Uh, to, f uh, to find the after smoothing of the stress to find the, let's say, lower stress values. Uh, here are some uh, uh, final results uh, that uh, we found. Uh, this is the simulation with the XFAM after crack propagation at uh, room temperature uh, using the parameters that we calibrated. And we see a quite good uh, agreement between the simulation and then uh, the experiments. We extracted the energy, which is the integral uh, beneath this curve, and you, you see here the amount of energy to crack initiation at different temperatures. These are the, the numerical ones, and these, uh, the, the, the lines are the experiments, and uh, the, the, let's say these ones are the average stress, and these points are the notch stress, which we see a quite good agreement at this part of the curve, but a little bit underestimating at this part of the curve, and at 300, uh, we see some deviation because of the, the we, are, we had complex uh, uh, fracture there, uh, and it was not easy to capture the exact uh, fracture. And at the end, we can suggest this uh, design curve to, to our, uh, let's say, plants, uh, and then uh, they use, for instance, if it's conservative, they, they, uh, it's non-conservative, they use the notch stress, if they want a conservative result, uh, then uh, they use the, the average stress. And then, let's say at certain temperature, they know uh, the stress uh, should not exceed that point. Uh, and then we use the same uh, concept to see, uh, we stop the simulation to see is it really cracking uh, uh, our, in our simulation. And for all uh, tests, we saw some initial cracks, almost uh, the same size, uh, using the same parameters that we used for simulation. And this is the, the fracture surface of simulation after final fracture. So uh, to conclude, uh, I will just quickly wrap it up. Uh, we used, uh, uh, let's say, drop weight here to address uh, brittle fracture of uh, steel slabs at high temperatures. We try to analyze the fracture surface and to see the, the brittle fracture there. And then we use finite element model, uh, which is uh, which were two different finite element models: one uh, plastic deformation, another one cohesive zoom based XFAM uh, approach to simulate the crack initiation and the crack propagation. At the end, we could suggest some sort of design curve for different plants to avoid this kind of uh, cleavage fracture. But of course, we need to take into account uh, anisotropy and also the, the texture and then the, the non-homogeneity of this kind of steep slabs. <laughs>
Yep. That's it.